All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing experimental design with identified threats to internal validity. So previously we discussed the difference between our dependent variables, our independent variables, and then both internal validity and external validity. Now we're gonna build upon those ideas and look at specific things that can cause interference or threaten an internal validity. Remember, internal validity is inside of our experimental setting. That could be a research setting, that could be a clinical setting. But what we're trying to prove with internal validity is that we are actually controlling the behavior. More specifically, whatever our intervention is, is controlling that behavior. So there are specific things that can get in between our independent variable and dependent variable and that's what we're going to talk about today. As always, like and subscribe so you get all of our video updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you do pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. Quick refresher, internal validity. The degree to which an experiment demonstrates a convincing functional relation between the IV and the DV. In other words, does our independent variable control that dependent variable? Is there a relationship that we can begin to prove? Because we want to know that we are controlling the behavior and there's not something else going on. What other things can happen to make us question our control? Well, these are called threats to internal validity. They're uncontrolled factors, keyword being uncontrolled, that could account for the change in the dependent variable or behavior what could make us question our effects of our independent variable? In other words, if I start an extinction procedure, I want the extinction procedure and only my extinction procedure to be the thing changing my behavior or my dependent variable. All these threats are things outside of my control that could make me start to question how effective am I being, essentially. So if we look at first, threats related to participant and time. Now I know many of you aren't necessarily researchers per se, but you've got to think, even if you're working in this clinical client setting, every intervention you do is a bit of research, right? You're gathering information, you wanna see if it's effect, if your treatment plan is effective or not, and you make, you're going to make future and present decisions based on the results. So threats related to participant in time. These are threats that naturally occur over the course of the experiment independent of the intervention. For example, history. Events occurring outside the context, experimental context, but during the study. What does that mean? So let's say a student's destructive behavior decreases the, during the intervention phase, which at first glance it seems like the intervention or IV changed the behavior, but there is also a school-wide discipline policy being implemented. So we have our independent variable plus this extraneous variable. And now due to the history of this setting, we're not quite sure how big of an impact the intervention had and how big of an impact the discipline policy had. Maturation, changes in the participant over time due to natural processes. So for instance, a child's language skills naturally increase over a six month study. If I have a kid going from two to three years old versus 19 to 20 in a language skills study, which one would you say will be more impacted by maturation? Well, probably two to three. When you're 19, you more or less have a functional vocabulary, a functional communication system outside of certain scenarios, right? However, many two-year-olds are just developing or starting to develop and blossom as they move towards three. So we've gotta be, be, be aware of that. If we're gonna choose a, again, a language skills intervention, we have to be aware that just by growing, just because of biology or some psychological phenomenon, language has started to develop. Testing, effects of repeatedly taking a measurement on the behavior itself. So let's say a client's accuracy on motor task improve across sessions because they're practicing the skill. If I start a intervention for guitar, naturally, if I continue to practice that guitar, 
due to the, due to the intervention, well, due to testing, I'm going to get better because of practice, right? So if there's a lot of practice involved, if there's a lot of probes involved, a lot of measurement probes, be aware of how that testing is affecting the skill level. And then adaptation. So a client's initial reaction to being observed wears off and their behavior reverts to baseline levels. Say a child is initially on their best behavior when a new therapist observes, but the challenging behavior re reappears once the child is used to that presence. Again, what are we focused on? We are focused on variables that make us question, are we actually in control of behavior change or is it something else? So continuing, measurement and data, right? Now, these are things that as a BCBA, in a research BCBA, you need to be controlling for whether you're taking the data or you have someone else taking data. So these threats compromise the reliability and accuracy of the data collection process. Let's talk about instruments, instrumentation. Changes in the measurement system or the definition of the target behavior. So let's say an observer drifts from the original definition of aggression. So we start to change that definition or measurement equipment breaks and is replaced with a less accurate version. So we're changing something about how we're measuring the behavior, intentionally or not. Procedural integrity. The intervention is not consistently implemented as written. So a therapist is supposed to deliver reinforcement on an FR3 schedule, but is instead doing it FR1 or FR5. The integrity is not good in that experiment. Measurement confounds. Unintended effects of data collectors. So a data collector who knows the outcome of the study starts to score or measure in a way that behaviors are helping the study. This is pretty common, especially in more academic research fields. Especially if you're working clinical settings and home settings, you want to be as honest as possible. You have to control your biases and the data needs to be the data, right? We need to write exactly what has happened. Finally, threats related to experimental design. These are how the conditions or phases are designed and implemented. So we have multiple treatment interference. The effects of a previous treatment linger and influence the effect of a subsequent treatment. Meaning we have a treatment we already implemented and now there's a subsequent treatment where we couldn't quite get rid of the previous treatment's effect. So testing two different teaching methods, A then B, the client continues to use the prompt from A while treatment B is still in place. Instability or high variability. Data path and phase is a highly variable, bouncing all over, making a clear trend or level difficult. The so baseline data is erratic, thus when the intervention is introduced, it's impossible to confidently say the IV caused a change rather than just natural fluctuation, fl fluctuations and the regression to the mean. The tendency for extreme data points to move closer to the average on subsequent measurements. A baseline phase starts with an abnormally high behavior count. When the intervention starts, the decrease may not be due to the IV but a natural return to the client's actual average. So some client, their average, let's say, is 200. They start performing at a 500 level. After a couple days, they regress to the mean, back down to, let's say, 250 to 200. Okay, and those are our threats to internal validity. It's a lot of information to take in. Flashcards would be fantastic here for these kind of ideas. But once you get your head wrapped around each individual one, they're a little bit self-explanatory, okay? Simplify it, don't overthink it, but you want to be fluent in this, these type of term style task list items. As always, check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all our study materials. Subscribe when you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.